I've said this many times on stream, but that's cowardly because I know not everyone that watches my content watches my streams, and it's a controversial take of mine that I've shied away from on publicizing on the main channel here until right now. Get ready to huff some smelling salts and stretch out your fingers because you're about to be working overtime with a comment getting upset at me for this take. I think the majority of anime has the worst dog shit, trash, irredeemably horrible, laughably awful endings. Even the best anime ever made suffer from very weak endings usually. Now there's a reason I'm talking about this today, there's a topic I'd like to get into, but before getting to that, let me just rant for a little bit. Let me just hop up on up here and start squirting because... It's something I'm very passionate about because it's super frustrating how even great anime will fumble at the end. Like, it feels like they're completely directionless with where they want to go with the ending sometimes. No matter how great the journey was, the ending can't fall flat. They can't completely shit themselves, which has become all too common in anime. There's endless examples I could give, but that would be longer than Santa Claus's naughty or nice list. So let me just give you a couple notable ones off the top of my head that I cooked up in my noodle just a moment ago. The biggest and most notable flop of all time in anime is undoubtedly Promised Neverland. Promised Neverland had an absolute masterpiece of a season one that was well liked by pretty much everyone, even non-anime fans. But then season two rolled around and it wiped its ass with all of that. Season 2 completely cut out everything that ever existed in the manga in order to wrap it all up in a series of episodes that just kind of happen out of nowhere with no explanation and no real reasoning. And then it concludes with a, I think it was a 10 minute slideshow where all of the problems are solved instantly and they show you with just still images that they must have lifted off of fan art from DeviantArt. It is so awful. That is by far the worst ending ever, but there's so many others that I could poop onto the plate for you to serve up. But before I do that, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Opera GX. Big thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring today's video. They're the best browser in the business. If you're using anything that's not Opera, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. I still remember the first time I switched from Chrome to Opera, it was like actually opening my eyes for the first time. It doesn't hog all of your computer's resources, which is fantastic. It's also fully customizable, so you can truly make it your own. They even have like animated backgrounds. And it also has extensions that you're used to. You can even import your settings from whatever your current browser is into Opera GX and just have it be a seamless transition into the better browser, which is Opera GX. And it just has so many features that are just extremely useful. Like you can have your messengers on the side so that way you have everything nice, convenient, right in one place. And it just has things that are I really enjoy, such as like forced dark mode on everything. So you're not just like blinded with a flashbang going to a new site. You can just force everything into dark mode. It's just a fantastic browser so I highly recommend it. You can click the link in the description below to get started with downloading Opera GX. And now back to that super stinky entree that you ordered, Platinum End. More like Shatinum End because they really shit out something abhorrent here. Platinum End is a show that has an ending that is so laughably horrible that it truly felt like the creator was teabagging my face just by having me watch it. Platinum Inn was a horrible show the entire way, but the ending was unlike anything I'd ever seen. I'm going to give you a spoiler for the ending on that one because I just love to explain it because of how goofy it is. Platinum End is all about, like, choosing the next god because god's withering away. He's, he's, he's expired, you know, past the uh, sell-by date. So he's choosing a new god, and of course all of the competitors are children for the most part. One of the kids wins, but the kid that won made it very clear that if he became god, he was just going to kill himself, most likely. Like, he was a kid who was just talking about how badly he wanted to die and that's it. So when he became god, guess what he did? He fucking killed himself. And then when he killed himself, it erased all of existence on Earth. That's the conclusion. It is so stupid, but that is actually how it ends. I could go on and on, but I'm not gonna keep just rubbing your nose in this or waterboarding you with terrible anime endings. So let me just drop one more lump of coal in your stocking this year, Soul Eater. Soul Eater was extremely popular, people loved it. It's still, I do think, a very fun to watch anime, all the way up until the ending. The ending of this show got a lot of outrage from fans because of how stupid it was, and you've probably even heard people reference it without knowing where it comes from. Friendship Punch. Soul Eater ends with our main character squaring off against the biggest bad, the super duper evil guy, 
and to defeat the unbeatable villain, they cook up something fierce in the kitchen in the form of a normal punch. So the main character just punches him, socking him in the jaw, nothing you wouldn't see outside of your local bar every Friday night. But this knuckle sandwich was a special one because it was powered by bravery. So after it connects with the main villain, he becomes overloaded with the amount of bravery behind that punch and he blows up. This became known as the friendship punch because the bravery the main character had achieved all that courage was thanks to her relationship with her friends and it was just trash just a cheesy power of friendship saves the day moment out of nowhere which has become extremely common in anime when the writers get too lazy to think of like a good way of wrapping something up they just put it all on friendship they just bet everything on the power of friends is enough and people will be satisfied with that but most people aren't anymore so point being Anime has a lot of terrible endings. Even the best shows, I think, often fall victim to an unsatisfying or just kind of flat conclusion. And the reason I'm talking about this t today is because another anime recently wrapped up this week, an anime that I fucking love, Mob Psycho 100. But this time, the ending was amazing. In fact, it couldn't have been a better ending. I couldn't have imagined a more fitting conclusion to a show like Mob Psycho 100. And it was such a breath of fresh air. Without getting into anything in the spoiler territory, Season 3 of Mob Psycho kind of just concludes everyone's storyline, naturally. And literally every character. It spins every episode as kind of like this epilogue giving closure to every plot thread that existed in the show for Seasons 1 and 2. Seasons 1 and 2 set up a lot of characters and it showcased Mob being just this unbeatable, unbelievably powerful character but also still trying to battle his own insecurities as well as like this demon living inside him. Kind of like those Facebook memes with the Joker where it's things like, they don't know the pain I'm hiding inside, and then a picture of the Joker smoking a cigarette with text on it that says, shit in the toilet, no one bats an eye, shit in the fridge, and everyone loses their mind. But in Mob Psycho, that inner insecurity and demon is something that they've showcased throughout the show where sometimes it just takes over and it's fucking brutal and in season three they confront that directly and they also just give these really beautiful conclusions to every character's storyline that's been set up even the villains have moments in season three and even entire arcs in season three where you get to see where they are at and what they're doing and everything just wraps up so so well it's not just like a full-blown happy ending across the board or anything but it's a very fitting conclusion and at times bittersweet and it's not just like a you know epilogue with nothing going on it still does have action and of course it's beautifully animated because that's what mob psycho became known for with its action and how great it all looked how colorful and unique it all was it's still present here in season three there are fights and they are great but the focus is much more on like at times, Slice of Life, which I'm not a fan of, but I did enjoy it in Season 3. And just giving a really great narrative, like, wrap-up to everything. And it did it wonderfully. It was a perfect balance of great, flashy, fun fights and very fitting, fun storyline being concluded. And by the end of it, you can't help but smile. Like, Mob Psycho isn't the longest-running anime by a long shot. It's wrapped itself up in, in only three seasons, and I know the manga also wrapped up, and it, this apparently followed it pretty closely, so maybe the formula for success when it comes to concluding your anime is to not overstay its welcome, don't draw it out and pad the time and lose direction of where you want things to end. I really think that this like bite-sized chunk of Mob Psycho is perfect. Like Everything it aimed to do, it accomplished, and it wraps itself up really well. I don't even know what I would have expected for a Mob Psycho ending. I didn't know this was the last season until it ended, and it made perfect sense. But going into season three, I just expected, oh, Mob's going to be battling an even greater threat this time around, and it's going to be even more powerful. And that's not what it was at all. It was all about him as a character and where he's going to end up and everything that he's learned about himself from this journey we've been on with him. And I don't know. It was just great overall. Like, I'm glad that they didn't draw it out, because they easily could have. They could have just kept introducing more and more psychic threats and just keep amping up the insanity of it because it's a very popular show, but they didn't. They wrapped it up 
right where the manga wraps itself up, I suppose. And I appreciate it. It did a great job. It had a great ending. And in a sea of dog shit conclusions in the space, I'm glad this one stands out as one of the better ones. I also do think the space does have banger endings. I don't want to make it just seem like I hate all anime endings because my favorite anime, Code Geass, I still think has the best ending to any show ever made. Not just anime. I actually think Code Geass's ending is just the strongest I've ever seen in a TV show, period. It's just, generally speaking, most anime don't have great endings, usually. Like, it really feels like it's mainly misses as opposed to hits. But I'm glad Mob Psycho hit. And that's mainly what I wanted to talk about, is how refreshing it was to get a good conclusion to a very popular anime. Because it's been a while since I've seen a popular anime wrap up in a great way. So I'm glad that that happened, and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because I've talked about it on stream before about how often disappointing anime endings are. So now that there's a good one, why not just open up this open up this wound here and pour, pour some salt on it, talk about the good, talk about the bad, and uh, yeah, that's about it. See ya.